Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Sunday Morning Simulcast with Rom Will. Don't let your mask become your faith. I'm going to tell a story. I remember this was when I was in my sophomore year of college at St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia. And I remember it was a politics class. Now, I don't know if the teacher, he was one of my favorite teachers. Uh, and I still have... Uh, I still have some books from that class. That's how much of a favorite teacher he was, right? And I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. He told a story. We came into class. We sat down. He told a story, right? And he told a story about a man who had gotten his face burned in a fire real badly. He got in. This was a guy who was living an ordinary life and not much going on for him. And he got his face burned in this fire. So he went to this mask maker, you know, to put up, to give him a mask to cover up the burns and everything, right? And the mask maker gave him a real handsome face, a mask of a very handsome man. And this man's life changed, right? This man's life changed. All of a sudden, he was becoming successful. He was getting attention from the ladies. He was getting all this excitement. But at some point, things started going the other direction because, yes, it brought some, uh, it brought some positive things, but it also brought some negativity, which is a reality in life. You know, that's just a reality in life. You know, if things are going well, that's eh, something. Negativity always comes. It depends on how you're going to deal with it, right? But anyway, you know, it got to the point that the negativity became so strong and the man realized it was because of the mask. So he went back to the mask maker. And, I mean, the stuff was so bad, he was willing just to walk around with that burnt face. So he went back to the mask maker and he said, hey, I need you to take this mask off, right? I need, I, this is, it's, it's bringing me a whole lot of problems. So the mask maker took it off, and once he took, once the mask maker took off the mask, he stepped back and he said, oh, no. And the man wondered what's up. So he went to, the man went to the mirror, and he looked at it, and it was like his face had become the mask. It wasn't the burn marks. His face had become the mask. He had worn it so well. And I remember when the teacher told us that story, he actually dismissed us after he finished that story. He dismissed us. He said, hey, y'all can leave early today. And that story has stuck with me to this day. I'm going to tell you what. Going through life, people are wearing masks. And I've talked about this numerous times. I've talked about it on these Sunday messages. I talk about it a whole lot on my Deep Thought channel. We got these masks out here. We got these masks. And the thing is, we cannot allow the mask to become our face. Because, look, this is what happens. When we go through life to deal in society and also in response to traumas through myriad reasons, we start putting on a mask. We start hiding our true selves. We start burying our true personality. Now, if somebody is in an intimate relationship with us or extremely good friends, maybe they lucky to even see a part of your true face. But we get to the point, we wear that mask so much, we even wearing it in our intimate relationships. But see, that mask, you know, it's a protection in some ways, but it's also a curse. Because it will draw certain things to you, it will draw certain negative experiences. And then the main thing, even with uh, whether they draw positive or ne negative experiences, it's not your true self. It's not your authentic self. Because your authentic self is perfect. Your authentic self was made by your creator. So that, that, that's, and that's the key. That's the key to really having happiness is to be your authentic self. But see, most of us, 99.9% .9 of us, myself included, have been wearing those masks. Now, I've gotten a little bit better. I've been able to chip at the mask and things are getting better, but yeah, it's a tough chip, right? Because that mask had become my face. So I'm chipping at it, chipping at it, but that's everybody else. That mask becomes their face. You think this is who they are. It was like, no. It's what their mask is. It's their exoskeleton. Because think about it. 
how often do we identify ourselves not by who we truly are, but what we do for a living? What our religion is, what our po- what our politics are, what we own. How often we do that, or even what clothes we wear. That's how they know that that's part of it. What car we drive. That's part of it, and then pff, that's just one part. The personality. How many of us are truly the way we behave? We yeah, we like that in public, but then behind closed doors, we're something different. That means we have a mask. But see, sometimes that mask can become your face. That's not good. That is not good. Because let's be real, a lot of times people wearing a mask and it might bring them a little bit of joy, but not total joy. Think about it, not total joy. It's really hurting us in like myriad ways. You know, it's bringing us negative experiences, you know? Or people fall, or you know what, especially intimate relationships or male-female relationships or however you want to relate. You know, it brings people to us, but they didn't see your true self. They see the mask. But then when they, in an actual relationship, they might even get married to you. When they see past that mask, they don't like what they see. So that brings you pain. That brings you sadness. You know? And we just keep going with it. You know? It's, it's become who we are. See, your face, your face is already there. Your face is perfect. Your face was made by your creator. I got to emphasize that more and more. But that mask, that's man-made. That mask is made by whatever culture you're in, whatever society you're in, by people who want you to serve their agenda. And eventually it becomes your face. You think this is who you are. No, it's not. No, it it is not. It's your mask. It's your coping mechanism. But you have to face it every day. You have to get to the point where you see your true self. And it's tough because sometimes that mask becomes so ingrained in us that we think this is our true self. It's become our face. No, we got to fight it. We got to fight it every second, every move. Like I said, I'm not exempt from it. I am not exempt from it. And one of the things that's helped me in the past few years is that I fought it more and more and more. I'm chipping away. I am chipping away at it. Everybody else has to chip at their mask, all right? Don't let your mask become your face. Please think on everything I just said. Peace and blessings, everyone.